Santé. This beer is actually older than me. Science explains that it tastes better coming out of a funeral. This may be the best thing he's ever tasted. It would be perfect, except for your stupid cardigan. Okay, I apologize. <laughs> Founded in 2013 by husband and wife team Eglantine and Aurelian, Brasserie La Deboche has enjoyed nearly instant fame with their signature dark oak-aged Anglo-Saxon style beers. With labels designed by illustrators, tattoo artists, and comic authors, mixed with their strong crowdfunding roots, it's no wonder they owe their meteoric rise to success to being a brewery of the people. Hello, I'm James. Martin, hi. Hi, I'm Martin, nice to meet you. Hi, Martin. Hi. Why did you just kiss him? That's what you do in France. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. 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 You have to kiss me too. Let's have a few beers first. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> so tell us a little about beer here. We started to brew like five years ago in a small place, and we've been very lucky that our beers were like satisfying people. And we've decided to open a tap room. Then people can have some beers that are not usually so much uh, sold around here. Craft beer is not such a big thing around Angoulême. We are very close from Bordeaux, so a lot of people are drinking wine, also cognac. So you guys are the pioneers of craft beer in this part of France? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes, we are. As a husband and wife team. Yeah. Yes. We'd love to continue speaking about the beer scene here and your business, but we'd also love to taste some beer. Have you been good? Are you Santa Claus? I'm Santa Beer Claus. It's my favorite type of Santa. <laughs> this is a sour with passion fruit. Cheers. Cheers, Santé. Cheers. You have to say it in French. Santé. Santé. Delicious. You like it? Yeah. yeah. You get passion fruit, so it always has that tartness about it. It's super, super sour as well, so it's an explosion of fruit in your mouth. This is going to make me healthier, I think. Yeah, it's five fruit and vegetables a day. I don't know if you have that in Scotland. In Scotland, we only have two vegetables. Uh, we have potato and carrots. Like well, if you have two pints, you'll be fine. I'm just going to have five of these, and then yeah. I'm all set for the week. Of all the breweries on Earth, there is one so magnificent, it's been inspiring people to make pilgrimages to its doors for 115 years. That brewery is Cantillon, where fourth-generation brewing legend Jean Van Wa uses the same process as his ancestors, trusting the ambient microorganisms and not-so-microorganisms to brew his lambics, a style made by spontaneous fermentation. Then he ages them in oak or chestnut wood and blends them to create craft-brewed perfection. As Jean says, at Cantillon, there are no brewmasters because no man can master the beer. We just have to follow it. Hello. How are you? I'm James. Hi. Welcome. Oh, oh, you've got a dog. How long have you been making Lambic beers? Since 89, so 25 years. Officially, because I, I was born here. <laughs> My blood is red, but uh, probably with some Brettanomyces in, you know? <laughs> And the whole process behind how Lambic's made with the fermentation, with the aging and the blending, it's completely fascinating. Most complex beer style in the world today. Yeah. yeah. It's a beer with a soul, you know? We don't control it. We have to follow the beer. In fact, the beer will decide when it will be ready. The beer stay in the barrel one year, at least. And after three years fermentation in the bottle, only the bread survive. Maybe see it and taste it? Yes, sure. Here, that's a three years old Lambic. Lambic is really the missing link between beer, wine, and cider. It's so beautiful, the sweetness in the front of your palate. You're getting yeah. the caramel, the toffee, some of the toasted oak in there. It's very, very complex, very yeah. complex. My father is there with a very old goose. That's your father. That's my father. For uh, special people, we open special bottles. This bottle is the typical goose bottle used in the 60s and in the 70s. Such a beer can age for a while. You can keep it for 20, 30 years without any problem. This beer is actually older than me. Seems to have a lot more of the toasty character, but still underneath that, you're getting all the citrus, the apple, the pear, the tannomyces. It ages beautifully. I've drunk a lot of special beers in a lot of special places, but to drink these lambics to yourself and your father here in Cancelon, I think it's the best beer experience I've ever had. Guys, head inside for a beer pairing pop quiz with Kevin Elias, the chef at Berlin's Schneeweiss, which means Snow White, and his take on the German classic Wiener Schnitzel, which means delicious fried veal cutlet. Uh, du hast sehr heiße Titten. 
<lacht> danke, danke. Danke. Ich habe oft Wiener Schnitzel angekostet, aber ich bin aufgeregt, deine zu probieren. Na, dann probieren wir mal. Okay. Das ist gut. Dieses Schnitzel ist wirklich wunderbar. Was wir heute machen werden, wir werden das ankosten und mit zwei verschiedenen Biers essen. Okay. Und dann du kannst entscheiden, was am besten ist. Jetzt fangen wir mit den alten deutschen Bier an. Okay. Das ist ein München Dunkel. So, was denkst du über die Verbindung zwischen den beiden? Man denkt, man sitzt in einem Brauhaus, also in so einem, ne? und isst halt ähm, und trinkt dazu ein Bier. Okay, so this one is a new brewery called Hans Kraft. It's called Backbone Splitter. It's a German take on a West Coast IPA style. Okay. I would like to feed you some. Okay. Ja, bitter. Aber das hat, das kommt halt, das kommt immer mehr jetzt, ne? Also es dauert, dauert an. He said it's maybe the best thing he's ever tasted. That would be perfect, except for your stupid cardigan. Okay, <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Elke Beer is the best mit Wiener Schnitzel. Alt Deutsches Beer oder Neues Deutsches Beer? Gerne das Neue. He said the new one. Oh. <laughs> Wow, what's this? Welcome to Vaso de Oro. Very excited to be here. Salud. 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 This is their very excellent Pilsner. It is such a difficult style to do well, and this is just such an amazing example of a Keller Pils. Yeah. It's fantastic. Incredibly drinkable, too. Almost too drinkable. How long have we got back here? La mujer es la amante perfecta, no la pilsen a todas horas. Makes you happy. It's a beer I love to drink all day. And it's the perfect beer for pairing with Spanish tapas. La historia de las tapas empezó hace cien, unos 100 años en la hostelería. Nosotros llevamos cuatro generaciones, ¿no? Gabriel's tradition and family history comes from four generations and a hundred years of bringing Spanish culinary tradition to that small plate platform. Y siempre con la cerveza, ¿no? Las tapas y la cerveza, que es mucho más divertido, ¿no? So I think what you said was tapas and beer is a match made in heaven. Nailed it. I just guessed. <laughs> I would say you're fluent in Spanish at this Thank point. Thank you, I'll take it, it's the beer. And what's your experience here in Barcelona, Riley? After six years brewing in Colorado, I came over to Barcelona when I had the opportunity, because who can say no to Barcelona? Mm -hmm. It's a very tight-knit community with influences from, from all over, really. Two Scotsmen, one Spaniard, one American walking a tapas bar. Sounds like the start of a joke, but it's actually a fact. So actually the joke is that none of us have been eating tapas yet. Rápido, 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 eso es fácil. Rápido, rápido. Rápido, eso es good. Gracias, señor. Gracias, señor. Tapas were born from being served on top of your beer, so that when you're sitting out in a plaza having a beer, the flies wouldn't enter your beer. Kind of like that. <laughs> so tapas has its origins in beer and beer culture. In being... We've got to find a way to do that with the beer that we're making. I bet we can dig up some pani jamón. How's your beer, Martin? Taste it and tell me it's, what you think. It's a dry salmon pilsner. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dry salmon pilsner. It might be the next big thing, who knows? What is this vase? What you're looking at here is a porron, traditional Catalan drinking vessel that has been commandeered, if you will, by the craft beer movement. How does it work? You want to find out? Yes. He would love to. I would. So what I've got here is our passion fruit Berliner Weiss, Appassionata. I could bore you with a real play-by-play, -play, but the best instructions I can give you for the Poron are grip it and rip it. <laughs> wow. Science explains that it tastes better coming out of a Poron. 